This is a basic operation video for the heavy duty lead balancer. So let's jump right in and show you how it works. So the first thing I'll need to do is just roll the wheel up onto the wheel lift. And then I have my controls for the wheel lifter right here on the side of the hood. So I can just add some air and lift it up. Now what I'm gonna do is I can watch here and slide it on. If I need to, I can tweak the air pressure up and down as necessary. Now I'm gonna grab my five arm star which is gonna go into the lug holes on the wheel and the wing nut and tighten it up. Now obviously this is a heavy assembly so I wanna make sure I do a good job of getting it tight. I'm gonna reduce the wheel lift, release the wheel lift and tighten it up again. Now I can pull my wheel lift away. So now I pull the hood down to start the spin and it's gonna start balancing right away. Now you'll notice that the lasers come on, on the inside and the outside. Those are taking the dimensions of the wheel as well as measuring rim runout for me automatically. When it completes the balance portion of the spin, you hear the load roller comes in, it's gonna measure the assembly diameter and run out while I get my wheel weights ready. So it doesn't take any extra time because I had to prepare my weights anyway, right? Now you'll notice it, it servos into position and it shows me where the weights go. Now I had previously selected tape weights because that's what I have here, but it may have also auto detected that it needs a clip weight, okay? So if we want to switch between clip and tape, all we do is touch the rim profile here to do that, all right? So now in this case, I've got my tape weights ready. It's servoed into position. You'll see that the laser is on and it's showing me where to place the weights on the wheel. Place my weights. Pull the hood down to do my check spin. And if I've done anything correctly, I'm gonna get okay. So there I've done. Now I've completed the balance portion of the spin. So now let's take a look at some more advanced features. In this case, you'll see on the screen down here that this assembly only has 25 thousandths of an inch of runout. That's a very good assembly. But what if it was 85 thousandths or 100 thousandths or more? Uh, we can fix this. So what we do is we press the force matching button and we say we want to force match this assembly. And what it's going to do is show me on the screen uh, how it wants me to make a mark on the tire at the high spot of the tire. And I can grab a grease pencil and do that and mark the tire here, okay? You notice it turned on the laser to show me where top dead center was. And now I servo it and it's going to show me where to mark the rim. And now I mark the rim at, again at top dead center right here. And then I would take this assembly to a tire changer and bring those marks together. Now when I do that, it's predicting that I'll go from 25 thousandths in this case to 3 thousandths, so that's a decent improvement. I probably wouldn't bother to do it in this case, but we could. So this is an easy way to make bad assemblies into good ones. Another useful feature that's shown on the screen here is the assembly diameter, or the outer diameter. Here you'll see OD 39.4 inches. That's telling me the diameter of this tire, this assembly. So in this case, you can see that I've written that on the tire. So that'll allow me to match the assemblies in the diameter. So when I'm putting two assemblies together, dual assemblies, that they'll be of the same diameter. So they're gonna wear much better. Now let's go ahead and take the assembly off of the, off of the machine. So I bring the wheel lift into place. I lift it up till it makes contact with the wheel and give it a couple extra more bumps because it's gonna, we don't want the wheel to come off of the spindle. I'm gonna remove my wing nut and the five arm star in this case. Now I'll just pull the wheel away, lower it down with the wheel lift control, roll it off and we're finished.